What's up my friends to this new video? This will be a test video, because we will test if this CNC machine with a laser engraver is able to cut different materials and we will also see if this is as powerful as they say. Of course, if we can cut something, we can also engrave on it. So the tests were mainly on cutting and not engraving, but we also have some engraving at the end of the video. First I tested the laser on these protective glasses, because I think this is important and also interesting. Then I've also made some tests on some very thin cardboard and thin materials, such as cotton and wool fiber. And then we've made some tests on wood. We had balsa wood, MDF and also plywood, of different thicknesses. I've also made some tests on fiberglass and copper PCBs, because why not? But as you imagine, the results are not that good. And finally, of course, we have acrylic. And we have black acrylic, transparent and white acrylic because I wanted to prove a point about power and also wavelength, because not everything is about the power. So we will see the differences on those and I will try to explain why we get the results that we get. But anyway, we finally had some tests on leather. We've seen how to engrave on leather and also how to cut it. And we've made the test with the watch belt. So we were able to cut wood, plastic, acrylic and much more. So in this video, I will show you all the tests that I've made with all this material that I have here and what you could do with this laser engraver of, as they say, 15 watts. So guys, let's get started. Hey guys, before we start, let me talk about the sponsor of this video, Jealousy PCB. They have amazing services and very low prices. I remember a few years ago how hard and expensive it was for us makers and also electronic engineers to order professional PCBs. But now for only $2 you can get 5 PCBs of any color that you want and also of 10 by 10 centimeters. I think that for prototyping that's more than enough. I mean $2 for 5 PCBs. That is a very low price and that will help a lot of makers to make better tests, prototypes and get the final product. But there is even more, they also have the stencil for the SMD soldering. So order that together with your PCB and with a little bit of solder paste, you can solder all the components on your PCB. And now the last service that they have is the SMT order, where you could get all the PCBs with all the components already soldered in place, as I did with my PCB for the 7 segment display. They have some very big pick and place machines that will solder all the small components for you. So imagine that you want to sell a new product. Just send the files to GLC PCB and they will send you the boards already ready for sale. So guys, check GLC PCB for all the services. So let's get with this video. What's up my friends, welcome back. I've just got this 15 watts laser cutter or engraver from Orter. When you receive it, it's pretty much already assembled. Just join the X axis with the Y axis and then add the laser and the machine is good to go. This is a 32 bits machine with the STM32 microcontroller. So let's connect it to the PC and see what we can do with the 15 watts laser engraver. I also connect the 12 volts input plug for the machine. This Ortho engraver will use a software that is called Laser GRBL, so install that from the given link. By the way, remember to use proper laser protection glasses. Otherwise, this laser could let you blind in a fraction of a second. Actually, I don't really trust these cheap eBay glasses, so maybe buy some proper ones. I'll try to put some links below for that as well. To protect my table, I place a big piece of wood below the engraver so it won't burn my workshop table. This engraver doesn't have a base, so you could place it on whatever you want, or directly over the material that you want to cut or engrave. Before we even start, I would like to take a guess and say that I bet this is a 15 watts input power, meaning that is the power consumption of the module, but the actual laser beam I think is lower than that. Actually, on the website it says electric power 15 watts and the laser output 4.5 watts, so it's not what I was expecting. We will test this with acrylic, cardboard, balsa wood, MDF wood, plywood as well, against copper PCBs, that could be interesting, PETG plastic, fiberglass, different thickness of wood, leather, fabric and a lot more. I want to see if we can cut each material, because if you can cut a material, we can definitely engrave it, just by lowering the power. So stay tuned for each example. 
so long press on the button on the side and the engraver will start and it will go to the home position. On the software, click this button and that will activate a very low power dot on the laser. This won't burn anything, but now we can focus the beam by adjusting the focus lens. So now we are good to go. Ok, so let's see what this laser, at its maximum power, will do against these basic eBay laser protection glasses. I think this could be quite interesting. Ok, so it seems that the plastic melts. But will this protect your eyes against strong wavelengths? In my surprise, it seems that the top part of the plastic melted, but it didn't pass to the other side of the glasses. But is this enough? I will do it again with a lower feed rate and also on the other side of the plastic. So I activate the laser again. And once again, in my surprise, the laser didn't get to the other side. Only the top part got burned. Anyway, please don't take this as a safety example. These cheap eBay glasses are still not good enough. Ok, so now let's start with some real tests. I think we should go from easy to difficult. So we start with this thin cardboard. This is just cardboard, so I should start with very high speeds. Let's test this with 300 mm per minute at maximum power and see if we can cut it. It looks that at this speed, the laser passed to the other side and also burned a little bit the wood below. So yes, we can cut thin cardboard at 300 mm per minute. I've also tested at 500 mm per minute, and this time the laser didn't fully pass to the other side. So for this cardboard, maybe 300 mm per minute is the maximum speed. The next example is against this RC plane foam. It should be great to cut this, because like this I could create my own models and cut out the shapes. This is a 4 mm thick foam, so let's see. The first test was at maximum power and also 50 mm per minute. When finished, as you can see, it didn't really pass to the other side. So I've made a second test at the same speed, but this time I've made two loops. This time, as you can see, it passed to the other side with no problems. So you have two options, you could lower the speed or just maybe make two loops. Just a small push and the star shape is out. So maybe I will have a future project where I will make my own plane design, cutting out this kind of foam. Ok, next we have this fabric. This is some sort of cotton or maybe wool of around 1mm thickness. So let's see if I can cut a shape out of it. And yes, as you can see, at the same speed of 15mm per minute, it cut through the material and also the wood below. So for sure, we need to increase the speed. Next example was at 500 mm per minute and this cut the material with no problems. You should know that with these lasers, the darker is the material the better. Ok, next I have this kind of styrofoam that comes with the engraver for tests. This should be very easy to cut. And yes, this was easy to cut at 500 mm per minute and you could do it even faster. This kind of foam melts very fast. I've made a second test with a skull shape and I had really good results with sharp cuts. So styrofoam is very easy, so for example you could cut your Christmas decoration out of this material using a laser engraver. Ok guys, let's start with a little bit more hard stuff. Let's start with this 1.5mm plywood. So the first try is at 25mm per minute and just one loop. As you can see, it didn't go through to the entire wood. So the second test was at the same speed but with two loops. This time it almost passed to the other side. The third time was at 20mm per minute and also two loops. And this time as you can see, the cut went to the other side. Just push it a little bit and the star shape will pop out. But 1.5mm wood is very easy. So next I have a 4mm balsa wood. This should be a lot more difficult to cut. I've started at 20mm per minute and 5 loops. As you can see that didn't go to the other side, so we need more loops. I've broken the wood in order to see how deep it went, and as you can see it went only about half. 
so the next try it was with 12 loops at 20 mm per minute. Ok, so let's see. Even with 12 loops it wasn't able to pass to the other side. Once again I cut the wood to see how deep it was, so as you can see it almost passed to the other side. The last test was with 20 loops. But no, not even with 20 loops I was able to cut the balsa wood. There's something strange about this wood that is difficult to cut with this kind of laser. But also imagine this. If the wood is thick enough, I first focus the beam on the first layer. But as I start cutting the wood, the deeper it goes, the laser will get out of focus, because the focal point is not there anymore. So this kind of laser has a cone shaped focus point, and even a few millimeters will take the laser out of its focal position. That will affect thick materials, so we can't cut them. Anyway, finally I have a 3mm MDF wood. First I've tried with 10 loops at 20mm per minute. But no, I had no good results. So then I've tried again, this time with 15 loops, but not even close. The wood gets carbonized and the laser won't pass to the other side. So for both the 4mm balsa wood and the 3mm MDF I had bad results. But just to make a point I now reduced the speed to 15mm per minute and also placed 25 loops. So let's see if we can cut 3mm thick MDF wood with this setup. By the way, while working on the software you can see the process step by step and also the G-code that is sent to the machine. And no, unfortunately, with no amounts of loops I was able to cut the 3mm MDF wood and I've also tried different focal distances between the surface and the laser diode. I've placed some more layers below, so the focal point should be a little bit higher, but still no good results with the MDF of 3mm. Only for 2mm or less I was able to cut wood till now. But next we have another plywood. And this is 5mm thick plywood. First with the speed of 25mm per minute and 10 loops, it almost passed 100% to the other side. So it must be something about plywood, because this is 5mm thick, so this one is thicker than all the other types of wood that I've tried till now, but I could almost cut it. I try again with a few more loops. So there you have it. Now with 12 loops I was able to pass to the other side. And remember, this is a 5mm thick plywood. So definitely, plywood is easier to cut with this laser. Then I've even tried some fiberglass, because why not? But even with 10 loops it barely scratched the surface, and I think that is made out of plastic. So definitely we can cut fiberglass, maybe just engrave the plastic surface that it has on it. Ok, the laser engraver when you buy it will came with this black metal necklace tag, so we could test with it. At very low speeds I was able to just burn the black paint on it. Ok, so I've made this test just because I've seen a video on YouTube with this machine where they show it could engrave steel. But not even close. We can barely melt the black coat that the steel has on it. And just to make a point, I've tried that on the steel knife as well, but with no good results. I do the same on a piece of copper PCB, but we still have the same results. It can melt, engrave or cut metals. The power is still too low. So let's just pass to the next example. This is a piece of 2mm PETG plastic from an old liquid container. With full power and medium speed, the laser is able to cut through this material quite easy. But the problem is, this plastic is melting very easy and just glue itself back because of the melted plastic. So even it cuts through the plastic, you still have to put out the cut shape that melted back. Ok guys, so I finally tried a 2.5mm thick black acrylic. With full power and only 5 loops, it almost passed to the other side. As you can see, with a little bit more, we can cut the piece out. So the next example was at full power, 50mm per minute and 8 loops. This time it cut through and I was able to get the star shape out. So cutting 2.5mm thick black acrylic with this machine is quite possible. But now I've made a test with white acrylic, and this is just to make a point. 
as you can see even at full power and a lot of loops, the plastic not even get a little bit melted. That's due to the wavelength of this kind of laser. The color of the laser can give you some tips of the wavelength. In this case this is a 445 nanometers. In order to cut bright materials or transparent, you might need a different wavelength. That's why I've also made the test with transparent acrylic. But once again, there is no point. Only the wood below the acrylic got burned. The plastic wasn't affected at all. So maybe just used a CO2 laser that operates at 10.6 micrometers. And that happens to be ideal for acrylic. I then tried cutting some leather. As you can see, I can cut this watch belt quite easy and this is around 2mm thick or more. It seems to me that when the machine is engraving, the power of the laser is less than just putting the laser to full power. As you can see here, I place the laser at full power from the software and it passes through the black acrylic in a fraction of a second. But then when engraving, it needs a few loops in order to cut, even if I set the power to 1000 which is maximum. Anyway, I finally made some engravings. I started with a leather wallet. First I burn it too much. The machine was working in the line mode at 25% power. This wasn't the best result, so I've lowered the power a little bit. This time the engraving was a lot better. So you could personalize your own wallets, bracelets or any other leather based items. Engraving leather is very easy and fast and cutting leather as well, depending on the thickness, of course. Then I've made some engraving on these wood smartphone cases. The first one got burned too much because I've used too much power. So you might need to play around with the power and see which one is better for each material. This was engraved at 25% power and 200 mm per minute in a line mode. And next I've made some tests on these plastic smartphone cases. Even this looks like wood, it's still some sort of plastic. The first example was at 25% power and burned the case too much. So I've made another test at 20% power. This is a bit better than the other one. Finally the third test at 10% power was quite good but maybe a little bit too low. So as you can see by playing with the power you can get different results but that's quite obvious. Finally, I've made another big engraving with my logo on another wood smartphone case. This one turned out perfect. It was made at 15% power and using the line mode and a speed of 200mm per minute. It had some really good details. So quite fast, you can personalize your own smartphone cases with a laser engraver. So guys, these were all the tests that I've made with this 15W engraver. Actually a 4.5 watts power for the laser and 15 watts power consumption. I hope this will give you an idea of what you could do with a laser engraver like this one. This engraver from Ortur is quite low cost. Only around 160 euros and because it has no base, you can mount it on any surface that you want. It is easy to assemble and to use. I hope that you like this video and that it show you something new. If so, consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. For any question, please use the new forum that we have on electronoops.io. A huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Till next video, thanks again and see you later guys.